Hey guys, Mana here, bringing you another Warlock Guide. This time I'm going to be talking about everything you need to know to be a successful Affliction Warlock. Now, this video is going to be a complete update of my first video, the detailed what a beginner should work on to start doing top DPS. Since 4.0.6 changed a few things, and there's also a few more things that need to be discussed. And since not everyone has seen the Beginner's Guide to Affliction video, I'll be covering the material discussed there as well. Now when talking about the specs, there's two main ways that you can play it. One of them focuses on Shadow Bolt as the filler spell, and the other one focuses on Drain Life as the filler spell. Now in terms of DPS, they're both relatively close, so you should just pick whichever one suits your playstyle and whichever one you're most comfortable with. But if you do go by my advice, I don't recommend you go with the Drain Life spec. It's pretty latency dependent, it's pretty unforgiving with how you have to play it. So yeah, if you go by my advice, I would definitely say you should go with the Shadow Bolt spec. So in this video, I'm mainly going to be focusing on the Shadow Bolt spec, but for the most part, this information can apply to both specs. Now, thanks to 4.0.6, specs have changed a bit. Some specs will go after more utility, and some will go for survivability. These are some of the choices that we have available to us now. Now, they're all completely viable, and when choosing your spec, you just need to take into account what your raid needs and what you're most comfortable with using. Now, for glyphs, we're going to be using Haunt, Corruption, and Lash of Pain. A lot of you might be thinking, but Mana, my best friend is a really good warlock, and he says that Affliction uses the Imp as their pet. Well, no, your friend is wrong, and he's probably ugly too. Affliction uses the Succubus, not the Imp, and especially not the Fell, what's his name? Now, for major glyphs, you're going to be using Soul Swap, Shadow Bolt, and Life Tap, but in some cases, your group might be needing some CC, so in that case, you can switch to Glyph of Fear. And you can replace either the Shadow Bolt and the Life Tap Glyph with it. It doesn't matter, they're both about the same. Now for stat priorities. Intellect is your number one DPS stat. Hit is no longer your most important stat. The value of intellect means that if you have a choice between putting intellect on an item or putting hit on it, you're going to want intellect. Now sure, you're still going to want to get hit cap, but you're not going to want to sacrifice intellect in order to achieve that. Now once you're hit cap, your next best stat is going to be haste, then crit, and then mastery. For gems, you're going to want a burning shadow spirit diamond as your meta, but depending on your server economy, this gem might be way too expensive for you. So if it is too expensive, you can just get a chaotic shadow spirit diamond instead. For red slots, you're going to want a brilliant inferno ruby. For yellow slots, you're going to want a reckless ember topaz. And for blue slots, you're going to want a Veiled Demon's Eye. If the socket bonus isn't very good, then you're going to want to ignore that socket bonus and just put a Brilliant Inferno Ruby on it instead. And a good way of knowing if the socket bonus isn't very good or not is to say, well, if it has less than 20 intellect on it, it's bad. And if it has less than 30 of a secondary stat on it, like Haste or Mastery, then it's bad as well. For enchants, well, well uh, there, there's kind of a lot of them, so I'm going to include a list in the description below to, uh, with links to Wowhead for each one so that you can see which ones are best for you. And obviously a lot of them are quite expensive, so I'll include a, a link to a cheap alternative to that enchant, which should be uh, effective as well. When it comes to reforging, you're going to want to increase your hit rating since reforging isn't going to allow you to increase your intellect. So any mastery and any crit that you have, you're going to be reforging that to hit. And if you're already hit cap, you're going to be reforging your mastery and your crit to haste instead. Professions are another way that you can further optimize your character. You're going to want two professions that will help you boost your intellect as much as possible. Now, I do recommend tailoring as, as one of them, because it gives a significantly higher boost to your intellect than all the other professions. But the choice is really yours. You can choose two of them, it doesn't matter just as long as they increase your intellect. When it comes to your spell priority, you're going to be using Haunt whenever it's up cooldown. And this is going to refresh your corruption so you won't have to worry about it. You're going to be casting Bane of Agony as soon as it runs out and it's important that you don't refresh it before it finishes. You're going to be refreshing your Unstable Affliction about 2 seconds before it runs out, and from 100% to 25%, you're going to be using Shadow Bolt or Drain Life as filler, if none of the previously mentioned spells need to be cast, 
And also, during the 100% to 25% phase, if you're ever in melee range, you should be using Shadow Flame whenever it's not on cooldown. Finally, after 25%, you're going to stop using Shadow Bolt and Drain Life, and instead you're going to start using Drain Soul as your filler. At this point, if you've been using Shadow Flame in melee range, you won't be using it anymore, since it's better to just use Drain Soul instead. Now lastly, there's Demon Soul. Now, you should be using this whenever it's off cooldown, or you should be timing it with either a Trinket proc or some other kind of proc, or you should be using it alongside with an unused Trinket. Uh, this way you get a much better benefit out of it than just using it normally. So during most boss fights, you're going to have to move to some degree or another. So it's important that when you're moving, you continue to cast. So for these moments, if you don't need to refresh your Corruption, and if you don't need to recast Bane of Agony, you should be using either Life Taps to get some mana back so that you don't have to do it later in the fight, or you should be using a Foul Flame to do a little bit of damage and also increase the duration of your Unstable Affliction. For AoE, you have two main choices. The first one is for fights with two main targets. You should be soul swapping your first target and exhaling on the second, maintaining DOS on both of them, and using your basic spell priority on the primary raid target. The second form of AoE involves using Soulburn Seed of Corruption, and then either spamming a bunch of Seed of Corruptions, or just uh, switching between all the mobs that you're targeting and using Unstable Affliction. And if there's no risk in getting into melee range, you should be getting into melee range and using Shadow Flame whenever it's off cooldown. Now, when it comes to add-ons, there's way too much to talk about, and frankly, it deserves its own video. But there are two things that I do highly recommend. Uh, the first one is some kind of timer add-on that'll keep track of your dots. Uh, personally, I use Quartz. This, uh, this lets me customize my cast bar, and it gives me a pretty decent uh, timer for my dots. The second kind of add-on that I recommend is one that'll let you monitor your internal cooldowns. This is useful because it will let you have a much easier time with stacking your Demon Soul with other effects. Now, personally, I use Need to Know, but I'm sure there's other add-ons that can work just as well. And that about does it for my Affliction Guide. For my next video, I want you guys to tell me what I should work on. So leave a comment below saying either Destruction or Demonology, and I'll bring that one to you guys next. As always, if you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. Later, guys.